start off with that very first question how does reproduction ensure the continuity of a species it's got two parts here firstly how is that happening how is reproduction happening secondly how is that ensuring um you know how is that going through living organisms and generations in order to achieve the continuity of a species that's what we are looking at so we'll be looking at reproduction like i said cell replication dna and polypeptide synthesis genetic variation and inheritance patterns in a population there's a lot going on here um a lot of info so i'm going to try and go through the um through the theory and break it down for you if you've got any questions please pop them up on slider so firstly we'll be looking at how traits are passed from generation to generation on a system cellular and molecular level so like i said we're looking at those specific you know cellular processes and then zooming out to look at how is that um showing up how is that affecting the whole ecosystem then we'll be looking at genetic information how genetic information stored as dna is expressed in external traits how variation occurs in populations and how this variation may be traced within populations. so there's a lot going on here um and like i said i'll be breaking it down for you so you feel confident with these concepts um and as you go through the lecture today please take some notes it's going to help jog your memory and ensure that you guys are you know focused sometimes you're listening and then you zoom out totally done that so try and make mind maps mind maps are a great way to you know connect things so make mind maps for instance on how these different things connect and then by the end of the lecture you'll have some notes ready for you to go that you can use in your revision this year so we'll start off by looking at in the syllabus it's got it starts they want us to look at animals so they want us to look at external fertilization internal fertilization what we're doing here is we're looking at the advantages and the disadvantages of both with external fertilization you know what are the advantages that a species is um, an organism is able to breed more right but what is the disadvantage that they breed more because not all of those gametes will actually um fertilize so that's the you know that's a disadvantage of that along with the fact that the um along with the fact that you know even after fertilization occurs we are not sure if the um you know we're not sure about the safety of that um of the oh, just like the word just oh my goodness of the um the blastocyst which then becomes the mammal so we're not sure about the safety of it either then we've got internal fertilization you know a disadvantage is that it's um it's limited in the sense that you may not be able to breed as many organisms, but uh, advantage is that there's the safety um, of the um, the safety and you know fertilization is it will occur more. Um, there's a high percentage of it occurring in comparison to external fertilization. Then we've got plants where we're looking at asexual reproduction. So we look at these different methods like vegeta uh, vegetative propagation, apoxemis, um, and we're also looking at sexual reproduction like you know, pollination and stuff. Then we've got fungi. So we'll be looking at, so we are discussing asexual reproduction, the different processes. So we're looking at budding, we're looking at spores um, and also fragmentation. So you want to have examples for these. And then we're also looking at sexual reproduction. In protists, um, we are looking at asexual reproduction, so binary fission, right? And then budding, how are, how does binary fission occur? You know, it's when that one cell replicates into two. Then we've got sexual reproduction too that we'll be looking at. Um, and finally, in bacteria, you're looking at binary fission specifically. For all of these, you want to have examples. Um, like I said earlier, I won't be going through like breaking each one down, but I am sort of talking you through each so hopefully you've got examples ready to go um and if you want like if you want to ask more specific questions to this please pop them up on the slider and then i can um talk through the concepts more but i'm just giving you a general overview of this um but i will talk a bit more about asexual versus sexual reproduction and what are the benefits and the disadvantages of each because that's relevant for all of them even though for animals you know it isn't said that you're still looking at asexual or well, you're looking at yeah you're looking at asexual reproduction versus sexual reproduction and you want to have examples like for you know animals that do asexual reproduction even though most of the mammals will be doing sexual reproduction so <clears throat> gonna have a quick drink so asexual reproduction 
it's quick, right? It's quick. It does not require mates. Um, it's not energy intensive and there is no requirement for offspring care. And that kind of then, you know, seeps into like even external fertilization where we are not worried about the, um, ex we're not worried about the offspring. Um, the offspring is supposed to make it on their own, but that's not to be confused here. What I mean is that, um, that when you look at asexual reproduction and you're looking at, for instance, animals, you look at um, sea animals, so you can then go on, marine animals, you can then go on and talk about that. But with sexual reproduction, there is the production of new alleles, so it's um, beneficial for biodiversity more than asexual reproduction because the offspring will just be a clone of the parent. Um, there's also variation and the ability to adapt to the environment, so that links directly back to natural selection. With asexual reproduction, however, of course, we've got disadvantages is that their clone lacks diversity, um, reduced adaptive abilities. There is they're more susceptible to large scale extinction events. So you will also focus um, a bit on this part um, in module six, but I'll get to that when we get to that. I don't want to skip ahead, um, but I'll sort of come back to this when we talk a bit about module six then in sexual reproduction disadvantages are it's time intensive energy intensive um you need a mating partner and there are fewer offsprings okay so now let's have a look at fertilization so as we know fertilization is the fusion of gametes to initiate the development of a new organism implantation so he is a more detailed diagram that goes through each one so we've got fertilization and then you've got early implantation where a fertilized egg adheres to the world of the uterus so at this point it's called a blastocyst then we've got hormonal con uh, control so you're looking at the role of the endocrine system in controlling the pregnancy process so you will specifically be looking at some hormones too you'll be looking at for example oxytocin um you know you want to look at also there's a bunch listed in the syllabus like testosterone you want to look at pregnancy hormones specifically though testosterone is earlier on when we look at um male and female hormones but within um hormonal control pregnancy hormones we're looking at oxytocin and the whole um and there's a bunch of bunch of hormones that you kind of want to look at and have examples for we then want to be able to have this knowledge right of how is fertilization occurring and then be able to manipulate it in order to um in order to so we want to be able to manipulate the process in order to have a specific impact and what i mean by that is selective breeding right so we want to be able to know the process know how it can be manipulated in order to um get our desired effect in this case you know maybe a specific um especially when we again this ties in a lot to module six when we look at um we look at you know gmos we look at different animal there's also animal examples um of genetic modification but Again, I'll wait till I get there. I do have a bit of a habit of skipping ahead. So I'm not going to do that just yet. But an example here, like I said, is selective breeding. So we understand that in order to achieve pregnancy, the sperm needs to encounter the egg at a certain time. So we, um, so we time breeding, right? So that it occurs during the intersecting fertility cycles here, 12 to 24 hours. Um, and we know that the phenotypic traits are heritable. So if you're looking at, you know, like for example cows you know let's say a specific cow has um it delivers more milk um or it's more meaty for example um whatever whatever the phenotypic traits are the heritable we want to be able to extract those and perhaps mix that um with another breeds um with another breeds heritable traits that are that are desirable or we just specifically want those traits to show up in the phenotypic expression so therefore, you know, we are influencing the traits of livestock offspring and we can crossbreed or we can pure breed. Either one works here, depending on what the desirable traits are. And this, of course, has led to the development of new species, for example, the Jersey or Angus cows. And here is an example there. So that's why this idea here of having this knowledge, being able to manipulate it and then um, have and then get a desirable effect that's what's happening here with reproduction but within the syllabus you need to know about reproduction in mammals and fertilization in mammals um, and then you specifically look at breeding at selective breeding later on too so